So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. And welcome back to another episode of the podcast Under the Stairs, doing that sub-series, that special sub-series in pieces. We're doing Silent Night from 2012. This is the Silent Night remake, and <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why I picked this. This is the first one I'm recording. The order will be mixed up because it's in pieces, which means I can't control anything about anything, but this is the first official recording, and... I'm doing the whole out of order thing, so I'm not watching it linear at all. And about 30 seconds into this, it suddenly dawned on me that this is a fun movie to watch when completely drunk or with friends, but when taking notes is a sobering experience. Uh, on this particular episode, we are doing minutes 30 through 35. Joining me on this episode is my very good friend. It is one Mr. David Garrett Jr. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. I didn't realize this was the first recording, so I'm, I'm going to put that as a as a nice little thing to put in my cap there. <laughs> Dude, this is the benchmark to which all other episodes will be measured. Let's go. <laughs> right, that I can't think for one second this was a first time watch for you. You'd seen this before, yeah? Yeah, we actually, my buddy and I, that we do a podcast together. This is one that we did last Christmas as like our Christmas episode because. <laughs> I had seen at that point the first two, and then I was like, "Hey, have you ever seen this movie?" And he hadn't, so we decided to to run with his remake here. Awesome, awesome! So you knew what you were getting in for when I said, "Do you want to do this?" Oh yeah, I was like, Excellent. "Okay, this." I was curious as to where my breakdowns would come, just because I knew there's such some some good like kill sequences, and I also yep. know there's some wild stuff that happens in this too. I mean, you landed two good segments, to be honest. I did. You, you landed this segment here has some pretty stellar kills and boobs, so I mean, right? So you can't complain. That, you can't complain about <laughs> that. Your second segment, which may have already dropped because we don't know the order, has some of the best dialogue in this movie. Yeah. Just like the <laughs> nonsensical, horrible Malcolm McDowell. He cannot pick an accent dialogue. I, I fucking love it for that. Um, but yeah, we're doing minutes 30 through 35. This will open on a glamour shoot, aka slash a porn shoot, although I don't think they truly understand what porn is in this movie. We'll I don't get think to so that either. later on. The description in the, the next segment we're recording, I think they've forgotten what porn actually is, because this is just a top of <laughs> shoot, which is not porn. Um, it will close out with a, <laughs> our Santa killer opening the lid to Chekhov's chipper, 
Um, which makes me very, very, very happy. So let's let's get down and dirty with this one. So it opens on a glamour shoot. We are looking at, exactly on the 30 minute mark, we are looking at a model who's wearing nothing but a lingerie and we are pretty much focusing right in on the tits. Like the, yep. this movie knows its audience. It knows it and I love it for knowing that that's where I was going. And then we switch to a chick who is holding an envelope full of cash. So this pays well, right? Even though the set looks, let's be honest, dodgy as fuck. Um, yeah, we're in a seedy motel here in yeah. the middle of <laughs> this small town. Yeah, it's described in your other segment. And I love the description of this one because it sounds like, yeah, of course, porn shoots here. Uh, what is it? Oh, I'll find it here. It is... Um, oh, come on. The best thing ever. Uh, oh, yeah, the Crazy Benny's Motel. Yes. This <laughs> is crazy. Crazy Benny, you know. It's That's crazy clearly though. a place that they only do, like, drugs <laughs> and, like, prostitution. And just so happens that this guy decided to start doing, I, got, I mean, what they call porn in this hotel or this motel as well. And, like, Crazy Benny's also sounds like a place that you buy knockoff electronics. You know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> buy this new Toshiba. Like, you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. My prices are so low, I'm crazy. It's like a WNUF commercial where they're just a guy that literally threw it together in like 15 minutes and they're using that very early technology to do all of the graphics. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like um, it's like MS, it's like it's like Microsoft yeah. 1995 like clip art, fucking PowerPoint graphics, some like early animations, and th- look at this text. It's 3D because we've thrown a bit of shading in the background. Like I, I like I absolutely love it. So anyway, we're we're in here, and um, like our our chick that's just received the cash, she's walking out. She's dressed like Santa's little helper, and as she's walking down the stairs. She walks past clearly a demented Santa killer. We know that because even if you just saw this in isolation, his eyes are hollowed out black. And he's also walking up the stairs with a scythe. Right. So I mean he's not he's not <laughs> I mean if he's gonna go if he's gonna find out who's naughty or nice, he's equipped for a lot of naughty children and not <laughs> a lot of nice. Like there isn't I mean, guy. I went to a country high school, and I don't think I've ever walked past somebody with a scythe <laughs> that I've been like, you know what, that guy, that's that's normal right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this guy is perfectly fine. Um, so they walk past. I love this bit because she looks up at him and she's like, she mutters to herself, creep. And he full on does uh, a Jason Voorhees. He is like, he is like, <laughs> like turns around and looks at her and she's like, oh. And she gets in her car and she's going to drive off. She's going to die later on, but it's not going to be just now. And um, we then jump at the, <laughs> the photo shoot. And this is where you know it's not just a glamour shoot because there's a sweaty photographer. And when I say sweaty, I mean this guy is <laughs> heavy breathing sweaty. And he's just saying the words, tits. Where's the tits? And... Um, I've written here bad ADR kicks in because this is clearly none of this is the original voice of the actress and she's like yeah I'll take it off (laughs) and then out of nowhere we have boobs and instantly the movie jumps up a point yeah well for sure she's not quite Daniel Harris you know what I mean as an actress she kind of looks if you squint your eyes and look at her face, she kind of looks a little bit like Daniel Harris, but she's Yeah, not I can Daniel see that. Harris. Like, if you walk in the room and you just kind of glance at it, and then you do, like, yep. a double take, you're like, wait a minute, was that her? Because I like, might have cut away from her, and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Daniel yeah, Harris I, in this I fucking movie? <laughs> 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 like, I didn't see that. Why isn't she top billing? Um, I kind of feel like in a, in a parallel universe, it is Daniel Harris. Um, Probably. But in this movie, not, because it's not a great, she's not a good actress. And um, she will die, and we will get to that. Um, but anyway, I've written here, in capital letters, we have boobs. And then I also reason, have that as well, except mine just says tits, exclamation point. And I so have I- seven <laughs> exclamation points. Um, I have clearly, clearly not masturbated when I watched this segment because I'm far too animated about this bit. Um, I, I put, meanwhile, the assistant is videoing the photo shoot. And then three dots, and then a lot of question marks after the words, why? 
Um, and then yeah, obviously a documentary we... behind the scenes here of what's going on <laughs> for their YouTube channel. This is how we set up a photo shoot. Do you want to set up a glamour shot? I like. I've re- like, obviously later on it's intimated that they do porn. Mm-hmm. The big issue here is there's nothing here to indicate that it's a porn shoot. So I don't know why she's filming. Right. Right. It obviously makes sense later on when the, we, the, the police are going to find evidence of a killer, but there's still no real reason why she's got her camera on at this stage. She would have it on when, like, I don't know, the plumber arrives to fix something <laughs> or, you know, like something along those lines. It's all very weird. Or we're doing but, like a solo scene here where she needs like the, like to be somewhere else but i'm with you is that it's what they're doing now just seems like they're taking i mean it does seem like a glamour shot except i mean i don't know if i would do it in a seedy motel but i mean what i would do i guess suppose other people is is completely different here yeah like like the only way this works is like a porn thing is if she literally gets a phone call and is told that if she masturbates she will save the world and then we're filming (laughs) but that's unlikely to happen it's all very very strange but like that's too much writing (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) but like as soon as soon as all this starts happening like the the photographer i've written here who's clearly ejaculated in his pants (laughs) his pants he's like he's breathing like not in a good way like see if like see if you were doing like See if you decided, you know what, I'm going to get a new photo for my ID badge for work. Right? And you showed up and you sat in a chair. And the person, like, taking the photographs was like, you know what, you should just, like, you should just, like, take the tie off and unbutton that top button. You were like, okay, and then they started going, Ugh. Like, at that point, I'd be like, I don't feel comfortable about this. Yeah. I'm Maybe gone. Like, I'm, up, I'm out the door. I'm like, you know what, like. <laughs> it's like, he's He's breathing. I've seen movies where things happen from here. I'm good. <laughs> oh, there's a couch over there. Awesome. Uh, it's just, it's all very strange. Meanwhile, though, there's a knock at the door, and the assistant, a.k.a. Goldie, um, thinks that the first model has forgotten something. I love the fact that she'd knock on the door instead of just walking in. Right. Like, she just it's, left. Yeah, it's not It's not locked. We, we all know each other. This would be fine. But anyway, she's like, oh, maybe it's maybe she's forgotten something and um, there's another knock on the door the photographer makes Goldie answer the door um, and I've written here importantly she leaves the video recorder on the sideboard which the camera zooms in on which plays pretty much no part in the rest of the story so <laughs> I don't know why we're doing this but we're going to do it anyway Filmer's like, the movie is like look at this video camera which has been left here remember this remember it it's not really going to do anything because even if the police look at it it's just a guy dressed in a santa suit during a santa con um so this gives us nothing but we're going to do it anyway and uh yeah she answers the door and they're put here santa kills her with a and i've been auto corrected here what i put is scythe in the stomach but it says santa kills her with a south in the stomach <laughs> I mean, Interesting. that doesn't even make sense. But yeah, he goes right up, right up in her stomach. Great shot, great effects. Yeah. I mean, they went practical on this one, so that's cool. Um, I mean, there's a propensity in this movie for anyone, regardless where they are touched with a weapon, to bleed from the mouth. Like, if someone oh, yeah. nicks their thumb, they're going to bleed from their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm not entirely sure that's how biology works but then again i am not a biologist so i don't i just assumed watching movies like this growing up that like anytime you died like you just bled from the mouth like that was like (laughs) the indicator that you finally died so like (laughs) i suppose it's an easier visual effect to do than soiling yourself which actually does happen when you die and all that yeah this is less messy it's easier to do and it's visual so let's just do that um yeah she she goes down meanwhile the model who is see? <laughs> I, I love this. Like the lights are not that bright, but they're so bright that she can't quite focus on what's happening at the door, right. five paces away from her. But she's like, uh, uh, and then she <laughs> she notes what's happened here, and you know what's happened? She, like the, Goldie's been Goldie's down. We have a Goldie down, and she <laughs> kind of screams at the photographer, then runs to the bathroom. 
he takes a side to the balls. Yes. This movie is pretty vicious. And I, like, it is. I say that kind of jokingly, but it really, really is. The deaths in this movie do not pull punches. In this movie, a child, granted she's horrible and obnoxious, dies by cattle prod. <laughs> like... On I knew that that happened. I couldn't remember what the necessarily the weapon is. And I'll say that actually stays in line with the original movie with keeping that yep. like mean spiritness. So, which is kind of ironic when you're doing a Christmas movie, which you know, supposed <laughs> to be that that joyous season. So, <laughs> yeah, they, they lean right into it. like the idea of they try and play it out a little bit more in the segment, which we will have recorded, but maybe have been released or maybe not about yeah, the right. idea of like this Santa exposing the town's sins. Mm-hmm. which goes nowhere so let's I'm just stressing this just now <laughs> this is the first episode you're listening to it goes nowhere like there's a, there's a nugget of an idea which no one develops out with bad Santa kills a lot of people and that's it um, but yeah like he takes a side to the balls he goes down the model is now locked in the bathroom mm-hmm. Santa like just like gets into the bathroom as if it's nothing <laughs> like doors or nothing to this guy I love this scene because we get a like a you think he's going to strangle her essentially asphyxiate her using a shower curtain Yep. and it's a clear plastic one I'm always wary about clear plastic shower curtains out with the let's keep the water in what is their purpose unless you're a voyeur ah uh, good point yeah you know what I mean what is the purpose yeah. of that you can make out everything through a clear plastic shower curtain. <laughs> so, yeah, like the only people that have clear plastic shower curtains are perverts. Um, so I'm just. Putting that Which is That's... fitting for this motel. It's yeah. all coming full circle. <laughs> yeah. Crazy Benny's like, I've got a camera in every bathroom. I want to see through that shower curtain. That's why they got me crazy Benny. Um, so, yeah, like, he's, he's about to kill her for some reason. Off camera, and this all happens off camera, uh, the photographer manages to get to his shotgun, yep. um, which we didn't know he had, and also quite dangerous to have in a photo shoot for porn. Um, he shoots through the wall and startles Santa, who goes through to kill him once again off screen, um, yeah. which is weird considering all the visual effects we've already used. Uh, not quite Daniel Harris is hanging on the door, uh, so she's hanging out the window. And uh, she gets startled. She falls. I've written here. Um, she <laughs> model climbs that window, and bad green screen fall happens into trash. This is terrible. We got our little diehard scene here as yeah, she falls out of the second story window. <laughs> How can the same shit happen to the same model two times? Uh, <laughs> shit, this is our yippee kai moment. She hits the trash. She's still topless which almost every shot of her from this point onwards reminds her that she's still topless. Um, She goes running through this motel. You know what's right beside this motel? A fucking, like a, a, like a, like a tree lot. Like a place that sells Christmas trees. Yeah, a little like Christmas tree, yeah. Yeah, like she's running towards this. Meanwhile, Santa has upgraded from a scythe to an axe. We don't know how that happened, but like continuity be damned. He's following after her. She works her way through the trees here. Um, Mm -hmm. There's very little, if any, dialogue, but she's working her way through her trees. um, And then she passes, uh, she she comes to a hut. And as soon as she touches this hut, a wood chipper kicks in. And instantly this (laughs) is Chekhov's chipper because you're like that. Oh, she's going in the chipper. Um, And I love the fact that we're going to do that here. Um... We get a like almost a minute of her like peering round trees and like cutting. Yeah, you gotta build that suspense, yeah. Yeah, it's a long time <laughs> to build that. Like there's building suspense and then there's padding for time. This yeah. movie is padding for time. It's about a minute of her looking through things and going, oh, oh, oh. And then she eventually makes a run for it, thinking she's in the clear. I love how they always run back the way they've came, which is the way the killer would have come. Right. Like, you'll just run the other way. Like, like they're anyway. not hiding behind any of these Christmas trees that are <laughs> lining this whole lot. Well, I have no line of sight ahead of me. That's the way I should run. <laughs> um, she takes a run for it, and out of nowhere, Santa swings an axe and chops her leg off. I've written here, the physics of this scene would melt 
Sir Isaac Newton's brain <laughs> um, because he swings the axe down, but her leg goes curtling high up in the air. Help. Like, that's not how physics works. Um, and she falls over screaming at her bloody stump. This five minute segment ends with Santa walking over to the chipper and lifting off the, I would imagine, safety lid. Um, yeah. And then we come to an end here. I'm not going to say that you are a very lucky person, but I am going to say you got two deaths via scythe, a, a leg severing via an axe, the setup for a wood chipper, and tits, which might be the best five minutes of this movie. It's definitely making up for what I got for Rawhead Rex, where <laughs> this one, I was like, you know what? You were right with what you said there. Like, the gods just aligned everything. You're like, here you go. Mm. Like, it's it's a, it's a trashy movie. And oh, this for sure. five minutes highlights all the best qualities of a trashy movie. You know what I mean? You've got oh, very sure. little dialogue, if any. It is exploitative. It has some good practical deaths, and it is it is teasing you with the thing that will come. Um, it's hard not to like like. And this was the thing like when I was like when I was coming back to this, and I've been doing a couple of notes for different segments, watching it all of it uh, all out of order. And the thing that kind of stood out to me most is that if I had to pick a five minutes to make someone watch this movie, this might be the five minutes to get a horror fan into it. Like in isolation, not knowing anything else about the movie, because you don't get that trashy dialogue, you don't get the the attempts to try and justify the plot. Instead, right. what you get is a topless woman for two and a half minutes of this five minute runtime, running around with the camera just leering on her, round <laughs> like naked Christmas trees as she is naked, and being stalked by a killer who's wielding an axe dressed like Santa. If that is not the promise of a movie called Silent Night, I don't know what is. I mean, I would agree. Without having watched, like, the whole movie again all the way through, I mean, you're it's dead on with, like, you're getting how violent this movie is. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you're also getting nudity, which, I mean, nine times out of ten, that's the person that's going to want to watch this movie. Yeah. <laughs> is everything that this sequence has. Yeah. It's, it, it delivers. Do you have... I was going to say, do you have a favourite bit of dialogue? There's no dialogue <laughs> in this, apart from a sweaty man going, tits. Uh, where's the tits? Um, do you have a favourite scene, segment, section of this five minutes here? I'd probably have to say her running like through the like tree farm is probably the best thing just because you are getting a prolonged like look at her and yep. you're also I mean like we said it's padding for time still but there is still a little bit of suspense that gets built it just runs too long but I mean at this point I'm like you know what I don't really care I'm just watching her as she's going about everything here yep I'm with you the the topless scene of her running between Christmas trees well, the theme song from Baywatch plays in my head. That's all I need. <laughs> I'll be ready. I'm like, yes, keep running. Not quite Daniel Harris. Uh, run to that wood chipper and give me what I want. Um, David, you are a busy guy. You are writing reviews. You're watching movies. You're posting episodes of your show. Where can people check out your stuff, buddy? Uh, well, my podcast is Journey with a Cinephile, a horror movie podcast that should be found anywhere that podcasts are available. And then I also have links to all of those episodes and all of my written reviews at horrorreview.webnode.com is where I keep all of that. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Well, I was going to say we have another episode to record, which we do. That episode statistically may have already dropped and if that is the case then i don't know what to say at this moment except thank you very much for checking out this episode of the podcast under the stairs this is an entire month of 24 episodes back to back so uh, there'll be another episode tomorrow guaranteed from podcast under the stairs and it may have david on it again because that <laughs> might be the way that the law of randomness works chaos theory as a uh, as a good buddy from Jurassic Park would say. I have Jeff Goldblum, Nervous Laugh, Drop of Water, Chaos Theory. Ladies and gents, we're back tomorrow. Thank you very much for checking out this episode and I'll speak to you next time. <laughs>